so we're at the beginning of row six. We're on the wrong side of the work here, you can see. And we're gonna start as normal with three chain. One, two, and three. And two treble in the base of that chain to do our stitch increases. My pattern booklet is being pulled over here. Okay, so that's almost like our little sort of starting point. It's going to be our starting point for a bit, I think. Um, we've got our stitch increases because we've done our little fan of three at the edge. We're now going to start, as we did last time, working those raised trebles round the post. So if I take my hook out, do you remember I said that edge stitch is always left alone? We don't put anything around that. That is left alone. That's taken care of with this little cluster that we've done here. So our first post that we're working around is this one here. And we're gonna be working, our first um, raised treble is gonna be a, a raised treble back, which means we start at the back of the work this time. So going from the back round to the front, hoping that I haven't picked anything else up that I shouldn't have. Oh dear, no, that's got in a terrible muddle. Let's try that again. I don't know, did I go round my hook then? I don't know, let's try that again. Round the hook, <clears throat> ignoring that edge stitch, coming from the back. If you weren't here, I'd be hauling this right up under my eyes so I could see what on earth I was doing, but you are, so I can't. I've got to pretend like this is all totally second nature. But I'll be honest with you, I'm finding it tricky. There we go, through there. Pull it through. Oh dear, oh dear. And complete. What's going on there? Hang on. That's better. And complete my first stitch. Now I know that wasn't pretty, it wasn't elegant, but we've got the job done. Like I said, if you weren't here, I'd have it right up to my face. So I fully endorse you doing that if that's what you need to do. That was a raised treble back. Let's try a raised treble front, which should really by rights be quite a lot easier than that <laughs> so i've gone around this second post here i'm now going to go around this third one and it is nigh on impossible to see the gap between the stitches so i'm just going to force my hook through there there we go so from the front to the back and then from the back to the front again around that post it's slightly at an angle because of the fanning out from the row before. So that's why it's not 100% easy to see, but we got there. Right, so even though that first one was a bit of a struggle, we've now got two, so basically our two new um, raised trebles in because um, why, why I say new is if I take my hook out and then just carefully turn the work, you will see that I've, I've now got raised trebles in place already. So I can start sort of following that as my guide from this point onwards. Because as we work our tail, this center point is always um, the same. So we've always got that treble, half treble, double and slip stitch. We've got that center flat panel all the way up and the raised trebles go out to the edge all the way up. That's, that's basically our pattern for the fin. So as you're increasing these edges, each row you're gonna to have to sort of start a new raised treble section. But once you've just got the new ones in, you can pick up the old ones, or the existing ones, I should say, and just follow that pattern through. So it's obviously follow your book as well, but that is sort of, in a nutshell, where we're going with this. Now, what I'd like to say is that, although we're now, I know that we've now got um, raised trebles in place already, just wanna point out that there's some, sometimes they're quite tricky to see. So if you look, my next one here is sort of hidden behind the work. You can barely see it at all, but it's definitely there. It is definitely there. So, um, you know, just make sure not to miss them because that obviously will completely and utterly mess up your work. Right, so we started off, uh, we did a raised treble back, raised treble front, and we're now going raised treble back again. And like I said, that's around that one that's really, really hard to see. So so just if you just put your hook under the, the top V of the stitch, that's enough because you're still going around the post. That is quite enough. And it does make it easier sort of to get your hook through. And pull the yarn through. Gosh, this one's really fighting me, but that's all right. Oh, no, it's not all right. 
spoke too soon. Yeah, I'm around the hook. Let's try it again. From the back to the front and through. There we go. All right, so I've got three loops on the hook and can finish um, that stitch. So raised at the back, um, and now I'm gonna do a front again, which is around this post here. Now do be careful, because it is easy to get caught out here because they're not, you know, you, you could very easily miss out a stitch there, very easily. So just do keep an eye on your pattern. Make sure you're doing enough repeats um, as you've been asked to do because that's, you know, ultimately the, that's what you should be doing. You shouldn't really be listening to me. You should be following the pattern precisely. <laughs> Sorry. And of course, at the end of each row, you do have a stitch count. So I would strongly urge you to, to actually do the actual counting of stitches, etc. So we're up to um, a raised treble front. So I think what we're up to here is our last repeat. So... We will do a front and back three times on this row. We did twice on the, on the row before. We're going to do our repeat front and back three times here. So we're now doing our front. But if you know the sort of basics of where the pattern's going, it becomes quite intuitive, doesn't it? And our last one on the back. And if you're not sure, just turn the work over because it becomes painfully obvious what's going on when you turn it over. So let's just stop there and I'll show you what I mean. So from the front, and especially if I kind of turn it that way, you'll, you'll it's, it's easier to see in real life, but on the camera, if I turn it like that, you can just sort of see those raised, raised stitches a bit easier. If I turn the work over, again, you can see the raised stitches there. And what you can see um, is where we've done two, it's really starting to, it just looks like those stitches are a continuation of each other. So they're like one very, very long stitch. That's the sort of effect that you will get on this tail, which is perfect, absolutely perfect for a mermaid's tail. Eleonora is a genius. We've said this before. Right, so we are now onto that sort of center point, which is those very straightforward treble, half treble, double crochet, slip stitch point. Do you remember last time I said count from the middle outwards? I urge you to do that each time because that slip stitch is so tiny. It's there, you can barely see it. That one there where I put my hook. There goes my double crochet. Hang on, so the, the slip stitch goes into there. Double crochet goes into there. Half treble goes into there. And treble goes into there. Okay, so... I'm sure you're way more accurate than me, but if you're not, um, then just counting it from the center is just gonna keep you absolutely in line. So slip stitch, double crochet, half treble, and treble. Okay, that's a little tip. That's my treble, here comes my half treble. Double. and slip stitch now slip stitch is tight to get into but you'll you know that's no that's not unusual they always are right so we're now we've got that fin shape growing 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 and we're going to go up the other side i think probably after this you'll probably be fine to fly solo i think for a bit so double crochet, half treble, treble. And then what you will see, if I stop there and turn, you can see this raised bit on the back, the raised bit, raised stitch on the back. So we know that we're ready to start um, our raised trebles. So this time we're gonna start with a raised treble on the back. I think we started with a raised treble on the back before actually, but we're gonna, you know, start there. And we know that because we can see it, it's in front of us, isn't it? So it's, um, it's helping us, helping us with our pattern. But do make sure, even though you're gonna go, oh yeah, now I see. Do make sure you just keep your eye on your pattern and make sure you've got enough stitches because we do need enough stitches going forward. 
ready to double back. Okay, so our repeat goes front back. So we're now gonna start our, our repeat and we're gonna do it three times, front back three times, okay? That was the back, here we go with the front. Have I not missed one there, have I? No. There's the front. I think you might find it becomes easier as you start to sort of find your way with these. Back, don't forget, little tip, just go straight under the, the top V. Don't try and go further down. It will be much easier for you. Okay, so that's one repeat. Front again. And back again. two repeats and the third repeat we're not building on anything it is actually we're using up those new stitches from the previous row okay so we're not building on anything so we've done front we've done back we're going to do front again using one of those new stitches let's call it a new stitch if it hasn't had a raised treble around it okay Go around the back of the penultimate stitch, making sure just to sort of leave that edge stitch alone because we need it. Oops, I have to do that again. I wish I could show you my setup here. It's it's probably um anything but professional sort of have to do all my crochet completely at arm's length and with a great big light right in front of my face <laughs> so I'm kind of guessing if you can see what I'm doing most of the time right so that was my third repeat um, and you can see this lovely rib forming beautifully on this tail isn't it clever so brilliant and I've got one stitch left which is just what I want to put those three treble in which will give me my increase won't it for the next row and it's just sorry that's my neighbor going to work now see how early i start people see how early i start three stitches go into there i'm so sorry about the noise it's because we're in lockdown and we're kind of having to make do with where i'm doing the filming i do apologize and the third one there now we're we not changing no we're not changing color yet that's really good so i don't have to i can completely finish that Bye, Ian. Everyone say bye, Ian. <laughs> That's my neighbour. Right. There we go. Right, okay. So, that was row six. Let's have a little look. Let's turn it over to the front so we're not bothered by all those ends. Look at that. Beautiful. So, you can really start to see these fin, sort of these ridges, which they do have, don't they, on tails? And sort of marine life absolutely lovely going up there um now then what i'm going to do and i confess i'm going to have to do it and come back to you in two seconds is have a very quick read through the pan to see if there's any twiddly bits that are gonna that are going to uh, trip you up give me two seconds right i'm back it was magical wasn't it it's almost like it was edited. Right, I've had a check through the pattern and apart from colour change, which is, you know, bread and butter. <laughs> Hello. Um, apart from colour change, there's no change now going forward on this tail for quite some time. And basically, you're adding stitches at each edge on each row. And what those adding stitches mean is you just have one extra repeat of the front and back to do on each row. So what have we just done? We've just done three repeats okay we've added stitches so the next row there will be four repeats five repeats six repeats and so on um until you get to um row 10 where you will be doing seven repeats obviously plus your two new two new stitches at each end um so i think to be honest with you i don't think you need i don't think you need me anymore um i think what we'll do is we'll probably um meet up at maybe row 11 all right because on row 11 we're just kind of getting to the end of finishing off that tail and it will be nice to sort of celebrate together won't it <laughs> so i'll see you i'll finish my tail and i'll see you at row 11